I can have you. Well, um, and this is the original part of the house. Now, this is the oldest part. This would have been the back of the house. The front was that way. So this is referred to as Mrs. Randolph's closet. A closet is not a room where you put your stuff in the 18th century. It's a private room, like a study, like a library. Uh, a place where you put your stuff was referred to as a lumber, a lumber room. Uh, gentlemen, if you have a, what, a shed out in the back, that would be a lumber house. Okay. So this connects. This was referred to, and this is the original part of the house. Now, this is the oldest part. This would have been the back of the house. The front was that way. So this is referred to as Mrs. Randolph's closet. A closet is not a room where you put your stuff in the 18th century. It's a private room, like a study, like a library. Uh, a place where you put your stuff was referred to as a lumber, a lumber room. Uh, gentlemen, if you have a, what, a shed out in the back, that would be a lumber house. So this connects the kitchen. I don't think the slaves are going to be bringing up the food this way. I, it's my personal opinion. Um, I think this affords Mrs. Randolph a very good way right back to that kitchen. Okay? Make sure she knows exactly what's going on. I think the slaves are probably going out that side door and into the back. Okay? So, um, yeah, very nice. And Peyton Randolph, Elizabeth Harrison Randolph, some of the wealthiest people here. He's got three other plantations outside of Williamsburg. He doesn't live there. Plantations does not mean that's where your house is. It just simply means a cash crop. Um, so he probably would have overseers, tenant farmers, um, what, slaves, you know, mill out there. This is his home base. Uh, a lot of nice things here. Now some of the siding, is uh, the uh, paneling is original. This door is original. It's over 200 years old. Mm -hmm. So where we're going is we're going to go into the addition that he puts on in the 1750s. Now, now you're going to see a beautiful front door, huge entryway. So this is all added up. Okay? Entryway, beautiful dining room. Black walnut here. And pretty much everything that you see, we don't make here. It comes from England. When you walk up and down the street, you're not going to see a glassmaker or a potter. We didn't even make paint here, came from England. The trades you see up and down the street, trades we're allowed to have. So, Mr. Randolph is entertaining. Now, they don't have children, but they have an extended family. They're related to everybody. Um, let's see, Thomas Jefferson is a cousin. Uh, Benjamin Harrison is a brother in law. Robert King Carter is a, he's a, what, her grandfather. Um, they married very well. Uh, let's see, Thomas Jefferson is a cousin. Um, Benjamin Harrison is a brother-in-law. Robert King Carter, is a, he's a, what, her grandfather. Um, they married very well. So come on inside, we'll take a look at So come on inside, we'll take a look at this room here. Um, now, as they said, Mr. and Mrs. Randolph had no children, but came in here. Um, now, as they said, Mr. and Mrs. Randolph had no children. Um, friends and family, Mr. Randolph is very high up as far as the government is concerned. He is a barrister, uh, which means a little bit higher up than a lawyer. He can practice law wherever he wants. Um, so, politically, um, and of course, he comes from old family. Um, the portraits that you see is Sir William Randolph and um, his wife Mary Isham uh, Randolph. Um, they originally had a state in Turkey Island, uh, Turkey Island. Um, and of course he's going to amass quite a lot of wealth here. Um, I found out recently that uh, she's, I believe she's uh, married, the Isham family was a uh, direct descendant of uh, Lady Godiva. <laughs> so what we have here, a lot of nice stuff. Ma'am, do you want to? Oh, okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, what we have is that here's a dessert course. Um, you can usually hear in the colonies, we're seeing maybe up to three courses. That's going to be a very special meal. It's not like England where they're going, you know, 10, 12 courses sometimes. Um, and your main meal is going to be about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, I think personally, Mrs. Randall would be seated. 
with her back to the um, fireplace there. Okay, because she is going to make sure the servant's coming in, everything is going to be done perfectly. Okay. She is going to be the head of uh, the household uh, staff here. And of course, the servants that are going to be waiting on her, um, th there's not going to be any talking between the two, usually. Uh, but there's going to be a lot, these people are going to be very aware of what she wants. All she needs to do is to uh, look at uh, one of these individuals, look at her glass of wine. She thinks I'm going to fill up glass of wine. She'll nod as to what dishes need to be taken out and brought in. Um, so the slaves are going to be here are very aware of uh, what's going on. I always like to point this out. That mirror right there uh, is original, and the other three have been hand carved on cabinet. Beautiful right here. Um, yeah, what you're looking at, we you know, look at wealth, you look at food, citrus, uh, that would be very nice, that very expensive. And these things can go on here for about a couple hours, maybe, if you're going to have a very special meal. Normally, they're not eating like this. Okay? Normally, you're not going to have three courses. It's just Mr. and Mr. Mrs. Randolph, and there is a niece that comes to live with her name is Betsy. Um, so after your meal, then of course you're going to be going into, well I think the ladies should be going into the parlor. And the gentlemen might be staying here, there are bowls of punch and there are pipes of tobacco. Um, those are called Chinese sunshades, it's an old idea going back about 14th century China. Question, feel free to ask, what are here for? We had heard, didn't, wasn't there a young boy that uh, fell out the window or Many, we had heard that story. What was a police officer yeah, police told, officer told us telling us? No, there's no, no documentation about that. Okay, that's what. Yeah. Um, well, we go here by documentation. Yeah. Uh, you mean during Mrs. Randall's time? I don't know what family it was. No, I know a nephew. Co when um, this smallpox epidemic happens here, and it's pretty much when you're occupied by the British, um, she does take care of a nephew. And we believe she was actually, actually inoculated from smallpox, that, as people were. So it's kind of conjectural. Yeah. So come on, we'll take a look at the parlor. And of course, now we're going back into the original part. Why are the uh, mirrors covered with the uh, netting? And the portraits as well. In the summertime, and you know, the, the fall and the summertime, springtime, uh, bugs, flies, don't want flies to you know, land on these things and make them all gross and yucky, <laughs> dust. Um, so this is something that would be done at that because there's you no know, screens, windows are open. Now you can pretty much tell the, this is the original part because Take a look at the windows, the trim on the windows, okay, here and here, and there's one here. So obviously there was something there, probably a window, because that would have been the back of the house okay. when the place was first built. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, one well, this is over 200 years old. And we have Peyton Randolph and his lovely wife, Elizabeth Pierce Randolph. Um, yeah, he, we don't hear too much about him in our history books, which is a shame. Um, it's because he does die in 1775. Um, but before that, remember, a lot of our founding fathers were lawyers. Okay? They respected English law. And remember, you all had rights. Ladies, don't let anybody tell you women had no rights. You certainly did. You're very sad. You know, these rights go back for yeah, the ancient right, trial by jury. Right to face your accusers, right to a speedy trial by public courts. Of course, privileges are different. <laughs> Rights were defined as given by God, cannot be taken from you. Privileges are pretty much something the government makes up. You know, we, uh, the government gives us those things. We can, they can give them to you or take them from you. That's a pretty good property any cause. Of course, I couldn't vote, but neither could a free black person or a woman on you. Rights are not privileges. The trouble is, those rights and privileges will be taken from you. So those people that we had in our government at that time knew exactly what was happening. That's why they protest. So he, as I mentioned, he, he uh, marries well. He's got uh, extensive land here. 
Um, but when you are wealthy, you are expected to put in your time. Justices are not paid. They consider this a civic responsibility. Uh, many of the government people are not paid. The wealthier you were back then, the more responsible you had to the community, the higher taxes you paid. Okay. So we expect, he expects that. He uh, becomes the Speaker of the House of Burgess. Those are the people we elected. We didn't elect people. Okay. Um, but he will take that step from being a good, loyal subject, as many of us were. And he will be part of that Continental Congress. As a matter of fact, all 13 colonies will let Peyton Randolph be the first president of the Continental Congress. And when they were first formed, we don't want war. But the Continental Congress would bring all the colonies together. One big voice, sending our complaints up to England. Okay. Um, but unfortunately, he does pass away in 1775. Um, but when he passes away in Philadelphia, we do have a copy of the funeral um, procession um, that was in the newspaper. And it describes, um, but when he passes away in Philadelphia, we do have a copy of the funeral um, procession um, that was in the newspaper. And it describes, marching up and down the street, 2,000 men in the regimentals. Mm. And it was thought to be 10,000 people lying in the streets of Philadelphia to pay him honor. So when he passes away, Mrs. Randolph becomes a widow. And that's important, ladies. Okay? She's a femme soul. That's a legal term, woman alone. That means, as an unmarried woman, she's the head of her household. She can buy and sell land, she can enter legal contracts, she can sue people or be sued. So um, he leaves the property to her. I should say the house to her. Um, the other properties is going to go to his um, nephew, Edmund Randolph. Uh, but, you know, this idea of becoming our own nation and separating from the mother country does, doesn't lie with him. She picks it up. And she will make that decision to open this home to Rochambeau during the uh, Battle of Yorktown. This becomes the French headquarters here. Not over in uh, the Whip House, that's at Washington's headquarters. Um, I think personally, now she's open, opening this home to him. Um, there is a section on the other side of this building that you're going to see. It's like a little house stuck on to the end. You can't get in it through the interior. You have to go outside and around to the back. I think she probably stayed there while this was being occupied uh, by the French Army. Okay. The officers, I should say. And she'll pass away in 17, I believe, 1785. And when she passes away, she wants her will. She wants that the house be sold to public ownership. Um, very interesting family, but unfortunately, they disappear from our history books. Uh, where we're going to be going now is the original front entryway. Questions? Before you ask. Oh, by the way, ladies, see, of course, these are coal burning fireplaces. If you have a seat here and it's too hot, you can use these fire screens to kind of protect you from that heat. <laughs> That's what those things are. Come on in. Front entryway. Little tiny stairs. Little tiny front door. Quite a big difference in uh, what he adds on. <laughs> now, Mr. Randolph was a barrister. A little bit higher up than a lawyer, because as a lawyer, you would have to basically choose. Do you want to continue uh, practicing in the low court or up the high court? You have to petition, of course, to have that done, but you can't practice in both, uh, both courts. He could. He's a barrister. That means daddy had money and sent more Vivians, of court to study law. So um, I would say, yeah, by the 1770s, he's kind of uh, retired from that, but he would still be giving people good legal advice. Um, of course, Thomas Jefferson would be coming in. Uh, Thomas Jefferson was a lawyer. Now, when he dies, in his will, he wanted his books um, to, I think Thomas Jefferson um, uh, inherits them. And later on, Jefferson will uh, take the, many of those books to the um, Library of Congress. So many of uh, Peyton Randolph's books are still to this day in the Library. So, where we're going now, we're going to go upstairs to the little teeny stairs and take a look at some of the bed chambers. So, 
And just be careful going up the stairs, they're kind of twisty and windy. Starting there about the age of 12, this kid is starting your formal education, so it's a little bit different setup than this there now. Um, so it is uh, basically furnished to those uh, those two uh, nephews that could have stayed here. Um, beautiful arrangement here. Come on in, we'll take a look at this uh, interesting room. <laughs> the wallpaper is uh, busy. And the wallpaper that you do see, um, this is a copy of original wallpaper of the time. Anything uh, kind of Asian influence, uh, that's what way they want. The further away your stuff is, the more you want it. Uh, we do know there were coal burning fireplaces here. And this room right here, we believe was used by Mrs. Randolph's niece, Betsy. And you can take a look at it, that, the, the paneling and then you touch it, it's over 200 years old. That is beautiful red oak panel. And that is an original 18th century guitar. Um, the pink set in there for Betsy. She'd be about, uh, about 12, 13 years old. So very beautifully appointed there. Um, this room here could be used, it's a multi-purpose room, and you see that a lot in the 18th century. This could be used by Betsy as an extra room. Um, she'd probably be tutored here okay, in this room. Uh, of course, she's going to be, you know, learning dancing and music. But ladies, you're also educated. Uh, you're going to be learning the sciences. You're going to be learning uh, math, of course, um, conversational French. Usually not Latin and Greek. Usually we see the boys learning that. Uh, but we do have documentation, I believe, in Greek. Usually we see the boys learning that. Uh, but we do have documentation. I believe it was Mrs. Carter um, that was taught, uh, I think, Latin by her mother, I believe. So from time to time you might see that, but usually not too often. This room also could be used if we had people coming to visit. Um, then the slaves are going to be bringing out this press bed. That's what it's called, a press bed. Taking it out of storage and unfolding it, this becomes a bed chamber. Um, you see a lot of stuff here in the house, a lot of property here. Um, the reason we have furnished it the way we have is because when Mr. Randolph dies, um, we know we got legal people coming in. And they're going to pretty much count uh, everything in the house in case a debt is owed. Okay. If a debt is owed, there is, on any of these, uh, this property can be taken out and sold to take care of the debt. Okay. And we are fortunate to have a partial inventory of the stuff that was here. It's pretty amazing. Let's see. I have two. I have a front page. Here it is. A lot of property here. Um, the reason we have furnished it the way we have is because when Mr. Randolph dies, um, we know we got legal people coming in. And they're going to pretty much count uh, everything in the house in case a debt is owed. If it does though, there is on any of these uh, this property can be taken out and sold to take care of the debt. And we are fortunate to have a partial inventory of the stuff that was here. It's amazing. Let's see, I have two. I have one page. Here it is. <laughs> Twelve mahogany chairs in the dining room. <laughs> yeah. 492 ounces of plate, that's silver, 48 tablecloths. Um, you go back into the stable, he's got horses, he's got spatons, he's got the, uh, what do they call, chariots. Um, and next to every single one of these properties is an amount, as to how much it's worth. And to give you an idea of what all this means, um, gentlemen, if you're a tradesman, if you bring home, if you're a tradesman, 
If you bring home 40 pounds sterling a year, that's pretty good, okay? 40 pounds sterling middle class. Think about that. Okay. Now, on the other side of this piece of paper are 27 names, okay? Um, we have Johnny, Eve, Betty, Betsy. Um, we also have um, Henry. These are the slaves of this property, okay? And next to every slave is an amount. Now remember, 40 pounds sterling, you can do, you're doing pretty good. Eve is valued at 100 pounds sterling here. Ooh, right, right. So is Johnny. But Secordia is only valued at 10. Yeah. Why? Is that a child? Maybe an Could be older. age. Yeah. Could be skill. Health. Sure, a lot of factors. Um, yeah, these are 20, can you imagine 27 people just to take care of this property? That's it. Yeah. These people are going to be highly skilled. I like to just have one helper. <laughs> 27. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's huge. Now, there's only two people that we know what they did okay, on this list. One was Moses. He was a carter. He carts. He's a delivery man. So he's going from place to place, bringing in things that are needed to sustain you on this property. So the whole plant is plantation. And boy, does he hear news. That's one thing about a slave. You're to be seen but not heard, but you hear and see everything going on. Okay. So Moses is going to be a connection between these plantations. Uh, the other person we know is he's referred to as Johnny on this inventory. He's also referred to as John Harris. Uh, we know that Johnny was Mr. Randolph's personal servant. He's going to be wearing something very fine. Uh, livery, okay? Um, you see this color, you know that Johnny is uh, reflecting the Randolph estate. We have evidence of Johnny being sent, my man Johnny will pick up this at a certain, you know, these orders, these written orders. Um, He's, he might be sleeping in the hallway in case anything's needed. Okay. Mm. Johnny always on, uh, always on call, 24/7. Um, the rest uh, is uh, is conjecture. We don't know. Secordia is listed as an old woman, 10 pounds sterling. So we think possibly Secordia might not would not be in the house. She's going to be in the back, in the back kitchen, taking care of the slight children. And we do know that there were slave children here because they are listed as a student in the Bray School to teach free black children, slave children, read and write and catechism. It's not illegal for slaves to read and write. So Secordia is going to be one of those people teaching them, not necessarily reading and writing, but teaching them how to be in a slave society. Okay. Okay. To learn patience, to be aware of what's going on, and to hear and keep news. So she's going to be a very important part of this area. Now this all falls apart in 1775 because our governor, Lord Dunmore, who's appointed by the king, is starting to panic because we're at war. He wants to punish the patriots. So he will declare that any slave of a patriot will be free to be fights for the king. Mrs. Randolph, next to seven of those names, will write gone to the enemy. Mm. We had this documentation in our archives, and Eve was one of them. We think Eve was Mrs. Randolph's personal servant, always with her, always trusting, always loyal. Eve ran away, she runs away with her son, um, Henry. Now the interesting thing about piecing all this stuff together, then we find, a little while later, in Mrs. Randolph's will, because of Eve's bad behavior, I have been forced to sell her. So that means she came back. <laughs> we don't know what's going on. Was she forced back? Did she, did she get caught? Did the army uh, just uh, turn her away? We don't know. And later on, after Mr. Sir, Mr. Randolph dies, now Johnny was willed to another, his nephew. Um, Two years, oh no, it was longer than that. Yeah, about two years after um, Mr. Randolph dies, there's a runaway ad for Johnny. 
find this in the, uh, in the Virginia Gazette, has gray eyes, can read and write tolerably well. Um, it describes the runaway clo the clothes that he's wearing and has in, in a big poke and a big bag. Fine clothes, much add addicted to drinking. You're always here 24 seven. That's very different than being a field slave. Being a field slave, you walk away from your area where you're working. You go to the slave quarters. He's always here. So, you know, a lot of stress. Um, and if you are very well educated, as Johnny probably was, probably had better manners than the majority of us in the 18th century, you take those fine clothes, where do you run away to? There's no free north, not even Canada. Probably run away to a big city. You blend in pretend, and pretend you're a freeman, which is exactly what it says in this runaway ad. May portray himself to be a freeman. Here's the copy of the documentation we have here. So, you know, piecing all these things together is very interesting. We glean these things from inventories, from runaway ads, from court documents. This is how we get the, idea, the, the story of the Randolph House. So, um, Mrs. Randolph, as I say, will pass away in 1785, and the property is sold. Where we're going now is we're going to go back into the new part, and you're going to see that huge sweeping staircase, and of course the bed chamber. We believe the bed chamber is Randolph's. If I was Peyton Randolph, I would want the new part of the <laughs> chamber, so that's why we think, yeah. And there are two beds there in that room. The reason there are two beds there is because the inventory is separate. is because uh, in the inventory it talks about Okay, remember, 40 pounds sterling a year. That bed was priced at 15 pounds sterling. How many of us could really afford something like that? It even has an interior pulley system. So, why two beds? We don't know. Furnished this way. We do know he was sick before he uh, passed away. It could be why. Uh, but maybe when Miss, Mrs. or Mr. Randolph passes away, you know, Betsy might have come in here to move in here to be next to her, her aunt. And, that time of morning. and of course, you see these little, little storage areas here. Uh, yeah, now in the 18th century, we have refused England's goods. Because um, we are taxed illegally. Originally, you know, only the people you could, that you elected could tax you, and that was taken from too. So we will refuse that nice kind of material. And we're going to go to Virginia cloth. We're going to start uh, creating our own material. And it's not going to be easy because we have the old fashioned things. By law, when we were good British subjects, we were not uh, allowed to have shuttlecocks brought in. Anything that could create textiles and mass. They don't want us to build and to make a whole lot of stuff. No factories here. So we're going to have to um, do a little bit of, um, I would say, technologically, uh, uh, SB, well, it's just like bringing these things over in your head. Okay. Um, yeah, espionage going on, bringing this stuff over. So yeah, creating real stuff. We do know Mrs. Randolph in her inventory had a hundred pound bag of brown sugar in her bedroom closet. Good golly. Yeah, so she's hoarding. She knew they were gonna refuse the ones good. <laughs> so where we're going now is down that beautiful Two mazes in that little bedroom back there. Yeah. You know what, they're, they're basically. Okay. I caught one at the top of the bed. My camera died. Oh, it went black the second time. Um, 
they have ripped out the original stairs here um, as a as a residence. Okay. Because they had bathrooms in here, kitchens, totally modernized. Um, they have ripped out the original stairs because originally the stairs were a lot steeper. Okay. So I would say this originally would have been flush with the bottom of the plate in the window. So what you're looking at is something that has been added on in the, we think about 1940s. Hmm. Well, I love these stairs, they feel very graceful. <laughs> <laughs> and of course you could um, already go to all the If you ever go to uh, Boston Hall, I believe they have used the same wallpaper except it's yellow. So you had uh, sample books and wallpaper, you choose whatever you want, you report it. Uh, so, you know, very, very soon this is all going to go away. Now, we won't be able to get those good things anymore. Um, now, where we're going next is the outside buildings. These are the outbuildings of the Randolph House. Uh, remember, at one time to be invited here was second only home. So, very wealthy man, very powerful man as well. So